But whenever you're setting up your cameras, it's always important to remember, what are you shooting for? Am I shooting for film? Am I shooting for television? Film rate and television rate are different, okay? Film is 24 frames a second. Television is 30 frames a second. And so if you're setting your camera to shoot at 30 frames, it's understood you're shooting for television, broadcast television. If you're shooting for film, you're setting it for 24. Now, lots of times in your DSLRs, you don't really have the 24 setting. And so what you do is you, you understand that your shutter speed is usually double your frame rate, okay? And so in, in, these, in these applications. And so if I'm shooting for television, I'm setting my shutter speed to 160, if one over 60. If I'm shooting for film, some cameras like the Canons don't have that, so you set it to one over, you know, it's one, 24 is the film rate, but you take it up to 25, and then you double it, and then it's one over 50 for your shutter speed if you're shooting for film on a DSLR Canon, okay? Then you want to set on your Canon camera, or your Nikon camera, or even your, whatever, it's a Sony, Cine Alta, or whatever you're shooting on, you want to set it for native ISO. So I'm, I'm telling you to set your shutter speeds for your standard, whether it's television or film, 150th or 160th for TV, and then set your ISO to the native ISO for your camera, which is the best ISO for your camera. ISO relates in, in electronics and uh, TV camera to the gain of the camera, okay? And so native ISO is the area where your camera works best without generating a lot of noise in the picture. Even though ISO was a term that related to the speed of the film when you were using photographic film, like the larger the ISO setting, the faster the film, the faster it could be exposed. Focus on the center of interest. Open up your aperture and adjust the ND filter to compensate. Take another look at your look of the foreground, middle, and background objects in your center of interest. Uh, placing the camera on a slider track will add a little motion that helps the look look better. You want to set up a custom white balance, which means you'll use a gray card or a white card in your camera. And, and I'll tell you why, because when you're shooting video, automatic white balance doesn't work because it's always adjusting depending on your scene, so you'll have the color drifting if you're using automatic white balance in a video shot with your camera. So you want to find out what your primary source of light is and you want a white balance to that primary source of, of light using a custom white balance that remains fixed for the rest of your shot. <clears throat> you want to make sure that your highlights are not blown out and the blacks are not crushed. As a matter of fact, you want to actually decrease it a little bit so you're getting closer to shooting flat where you can increase it in post using color correction. Uh, you want to shoot flat. And whites would be 90 IRE, blacks would be around 7.5 IRE if you're using it, a, uh, if you're looking at a waveform monitor. If you're looking at a um, histogram, you want to make sure that you have some space on the ends of your histogram image where you have a little space between the darks and the end of the histogram and the lights at the end of the histogram and the end of the histogram so that you have space that you can expand when you're doing your color correction.